Hello students, so today I'm going to show you how to make the bacon and cheese puff pastries. If you're vegetarian or you don't like bacon, you can substitute the bacon for onion or pesto or olives, sun-dried tomatoes, any savoury ingredient. Um, you can of course put the um, corn bacon strips in there too or the turkey rashers um, and just vary the ingredients. So it's a really flexible recipe for everybody. So the ingredients you're going to need at the minute are some ready roll puff pastry and some grated cheese, either some onion or some bacon or those other savoury ingredients that you need and also a little egg or milk or melted butter just to brush over the pastries before you cook them and that will actually help them go brown. There is a recipe sheet that accompanies the video so please look at that if you need to. So equipment that you're going to need, you obviously need a grill because you're going to grill your bacon first and then you need a board to put your bacon on and also a knife, I've just got a chef's knife here to cut your pastry or your bacon with and then also a baking tray and a sheet of baking paper. So I'll just move the camera down now and just show you that equipment. So you've seen the knife, we've got a baking tray with a baking sheet on top, you may need two depending on how many you're making. We've got our grill pan and I've lined the grill pan with some tin foil to catch any fat that may drip off which will help with the cleaning but obviously haven't put it over the grill racks because we want that fat to drip into the tray to make the meal healthier. And then I've also got a chopping board. Okay, so ingredients that I've got, grated cheese as I mentioned, I'm going to use some onion, I've got two slices of bacon, and I've obviously got my pastry. Now my pastry has actually come cut out in individual squares already. But normally what you would find is that this would be rolled up a bit like a Swiss roll and you would need to unroll it. And what you need to do with your pastry is cut it into six equal pieces, a little bit like this template. And then you'll get your six pastries that you need. And if you're using six pastry squares, you'd need three slices of bacon, not two like myself. I've got the two because I'm only going to do four. Okay, so we need to get our hands washed and put our aprons on. Make sure your hair tied back. Make sure your fingernails are clean as well, please. And then I will see you in a moment. Okay, so before we start cooking, we need to turn our cooker on to 190 degrees Celsius and that is 374 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 5 and we need to let that oven warm up to temperature. We also need our grill pudding on the highest setting. Now if you're doing your grill on the highest setting, just make sure that the rack isn't too close to the grill element and you need to keep an eye on this. Don't wander off and do something else otherwise your bacon will burn. So let me move the camera down and you can see here hopefully you can see that that I've got the two slices of bacon now I've run a bowl of hot soapy water so I can put things that I've had raw meat on directly into the bowl um, obviously do not put your knife in the bottom of the bowl but we're not using that at the moment so that's fine and you can just have somewhere where you can wash your hands and then go give your hands a proper wash using lots and lots of soap as we're touching raw meat there may be bacteria on that raw meat so we're going to first of all put the bacon onto the grill, like this. I'm going to pop that board into my hot soapy water and give my hands a wash. Right, I'm going to pop that grill underneath and I'm going to let that cook. Now then, you may actually want to just cook your bacon and not do anything else. So if that's the case, then please feel free to pause this video and then you know that your bacon's cooked safely without burning and you can just move on to your pastry afterwards. I'm going to keep an eye on my bacon whilst I'm doing the pastry and just explaining about the, cook it, the cutting. So I've got my four sheets here. We saw before that you've got the uh, templates. You would have six pieces of your pastry. If you've got a block of pastry that needs rolling out, you'll need to put some flour on the desk and also on top of the pastry before you start rolling it with a rolling pin. This is actually quite thin, you can see here. So you need to roll your pastry out to quite a thin um, sort of depth of thickness. 
because otherwise it's not going to cook in time. So what we've got to do now is just wait for that bacon to cook and then we're going to place it onto these bacon squares. So I will join you once my bacon is cooked. Okay, so my bacon is cooked and I've carefully placed it on a chopping board and I've got my squares of pastry here. So I'm going to cut my bacon in half and I'm going to look at the sort of the size of my pastry. If you've got larger pastries than this, you might want to cut your bacon lengthways that way as opposed to across here. And you've just got to really look at the ingredients and how much you're going to put in in terms of the comparison with the size of the pastry square. So I'm just going to cut these here. I've let them cool a little bit, so I'm not going to burn my fingers when I touch them. And I'm going to place that piece of bacon just in the centre here. Okay. I'm then going to add a little bit of onion, just to one or two of them. These onions have been frozen, so I've let them defrost. And I'm going to make two without onion, just in case somebody doesn't like it. And then I'm going to put my cheese. You don't need very much cheese, but obviously you do want that sort of crispy edge cheese um, that will cook and bake. Now this is a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella, so it's going to be a little stringy as well, a little bit like pizza cheese. So that should be good. You can add at this point any herbs or chilli flakes. I know quite a few of you like chilli flakes. Um, you can even add some sort of like spicy chilli sauce if you wanted to. But just remember, less is more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold those pastries over. And you need to just sort of press it here. But what you might want to do is just get your milk. I've got a little milk in a bowl here. And just put a little bit on here so it acts like a kind of glue okay so we fold those over you can experiment with doing shapes on these pastries a lot of you have made the jump of pastries with me before and we uh, did some more in intricate shaping but well, you can do that as well if you look online at puff pastry shaping ideas there's lots of videos and lots of different fill-ins that you could actually utilize okay bit of salt and pepper if you want to but I find bacon a little bit salty so I'm not going to bother. I'm then going to brush the pastries with the milk and this will just make sure that they turn nice and golden brown. Okay move this board and knife over to the sink the draining board bring in my baking sheet and I'm simply just going to pick them up and put them on. Now these are going to puff up so I'm going to put two on each baking tray. If you have only got one baking tray, you can leave some of them to the side, cook half of them, and then swap them over and cook the other half. Okay, so I'm now going to put these in the oven, and I'm going to use my oven gloves to make sure that I don't burn my fingers in the oven. And I'm going to bake them for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And what you're actually looking for is a nice golden brown. Um, don't burn them, but just make sure that your pastry isn't looking too pale because you might find that it's not fully cooked on the inside. So I hope you've um, enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy the pastries. Hopefully it'll save you a trip to Greg's since we're all meant to be staying indoors. <laughs> And uh, let me know what you think. Don't forget to send me your pictures if you do cook them um, on email to cookery at fiveacreshighschool.co.uk. Thank you.